Frank Fiddler joins me now. He knew several of the victims. His company, Defend Systems, had conducted active shooter drills at Covenant School. And he did a walkthrough of the school today with officials to help try and understand what happened. And I should notice, Brink, of course, you also spent 18 years working for the Nashville uh, Police Department, uh, and, and their actions, of course, saved so many lives uh, in this shooting this week. So I do want to ask you about your walkthrough in just a moment, Brink. But first, um, these live pictures of what you're, you know, what's happening right now in Nashville and talking about the victims. I know you knew a, a few of them and including uh, nine-year-old William Kinney. His father, Wes, is a friend of yours, and I know he was out of town during the shooting and had texted you. Um, what more are you able to tell us about that? Nothing more than that. He was concerned about, uh, obviously, the location of his son, um, and he knew we had conducted training at the school. He knew I was a former officer and thought I may have some insight into that um, and I did not unfortunately for him and at the time we were actually out of town we were in Memphis Tennessee uh, working with another school um, so I couldn't get any more information from him and tragically uh, his son Will turned out to be one of the victims. Mm. You also knew the head of school Catherine Kuntz and Mike Hill the custodian because obviously you you know you had had done training at the school what can you tell us about them? Uh, Mike I met a few times. I didn't know him well. Car Catherine I had a, a very good relationship with. I actually just saw her a couple months ago. I ran into her at the bank. Um, she was the type of person that knew this was a, a heavy topic and knew she had to be very careful about bringing this in front of her educators, but she was also adamant about doing that because she understood the severity of the topic and the severity of uh, the teachers needing to have the knowledge of what to do in that situation. So she actually did her due diligence so much that she came and set in on our training at another school first uh, to make sure it was what she wanted for her staff. And then we worked very closely together to um, customize that training program for this location and advise them on some physical security and teach them what to do in the moment. Um, and so she was steadfast in her commitment to doing this and in her commitment to these kids and more importantly her staff and their ability to perform under stress. And she did, and I, I, I did mention that you did that walkthrough of the school today with officials, and obviously because of her, right, you'd conducted actor, active shooter drills there before because she felt this was so important. Um, you know, we've all now seen the video of the shooter walking through the halls on the surveillance video. As you were going through today with officials trying to understand what happened, what, what did you see, what stood out to you? Well, a lot of it I can't talk about because it's still an open homicide investigation. Um, I, I will say this. Uh, I want to make this clear, too. Th this story, you know, the whole story here is about these teachers. Um, people are talking about the training we did with them. And, yes, training is important. But I wasn't here on Monday. They were here, right? They, their ability to execute literally flawlessly under that amount of stress while somebody's trying to murder them and their children, that is what made the difference here. And that is, that, that you know, these teachers are the reason those kids went home to their families. Um, again, the training is important, but we weren't the ones executing it in the moment. They were. I'll also tell you from the walkthrough that the only victims this shooter was able to get to were victims that were stuck in some sort of open area or hallway. Uh, everyone else, well, several were able to evacuate safely. The ones that couldn't do that safely did exactly what they were taught and trained to do, and that was lock down and fortify their position. They did that. Uh, the shooter fired multiple rounds into several classrooms um, and was not able to uh, hit any of the victims um, in those classrooms because the teachers knew exactly what to do, how to fortify their doors and where to place their children in those rooms. So I just want to be clear that, that this story needs to be about them. Well, it's pretty incredible that they did that. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not their job, right? They're not there to do that. And that they did that and did it right and saved all those lives. I mean, the horror and the tragedy of the people who are in open spaces. And I know your friend Catherine, you know, it, it appears may have run towards the shooter to try to stop, um, to try to stop it. Uh, but that so many lives were saved, despite, as you say, live rounds being fired into classrooms, that no one in those classrooms died. Um, you know, when we saw the shooter initially go into school by you know, shooting out those glass doors and going in, right, sort of uh, kamikaze style, um, when, when you heard about this and you, you knew Catherine, you had been in that school, you had trained, what actually went through your mind? So uh, when we were in, in, in Memphis assessing this, uh, this other school, um, because we still have such a 
deep connection to the police department. We were getting uh, pretty up-to-date information. And, um, you know, at first it was very surreal. Um, you know, I knew because of what I do for a living and, and because of our company growth, I kind of knew eventually that, that it was going to happen at, at one of the facilities or one of the schools or whatever that we had trained. But it's, it's still never, it's still very surreal right now um, and today. Um, and very tough, I'll say, you know, because we, we, we walked that crime scene, even though it was very tough, but it's important for us to learn from these events and get better moving forward. Um, but at, at the same time, I felt confident that, that the people here, because of Catherine's commitment to this program, knew what to do and would execute flawlessly. Um, I'm just proud they did, but I really, I really felt like they would, because uh, every one of these people took this training seriously, and we yeah. had uh, extreme buy-in from every faculty and staff member. Well, Brink, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. And I hope so many hear his words that with all that training and he actually knew that at some point it would happen in a school that he had trained, just to even think about that, that that's the reality that we're living in this country as a very hard to, hard to process.